Um, here, we'll, I'll hit you with a little pop quiz right here, Brian. How you feel about a baseball pop quiz? Lay it on me. All right, here, what do we got? Who do you who, Brian? The the most gold gloves anyone's ever won is eighteen. Who do you think that is? Ozzy Smith. You want one more guess? Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox. Wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. <laughs> How'd you go? What was it? How'd you come up with that? I just, when you say golden gloves, he just, he, he's hanging around in my head as a guy who won a ton of golden gloves. I, what I like about, I love Greg Maddox because he did everything else but throw fast. Yeah. That entire, that entire uh, Braves team, all those guys, none of those Steve guys. Steve Avery. Hard. Tom Glavin. Tom Glavin. John Steve Smoltz. Avery and Greg Maddox. And wasn't there one more really? Oh, John Smoltz. You said it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then none of them threw hard. John Smoltz, I remember one time seeing that he was bald, and I was shocked. It was he was already on the Mets at this point, and yeah. and he like took his hat off to wipe his forearm, and he was completely bald under there, and it, it he looked old forever. Yeah, it was devastating. Did you lost respect for him that day? Well, I was just like it made me feel, over his baldness. It, I didn't understand that young people go bald at that point. I was a little kid, mm-hmm. so it made me feel like you didn't have to be athletic to be because. I saw his baldness and immediately thought he wasn't athletic. And then I saw Janol. You should have seen his baldness and be like, oh, man, I can do this, too. Uh, well, I wasn't there yet. I had a full head of hair back then. <laughs> I'm not calling you bald. I'm just saying you were probably unathletic. And then I saw Ginobili, and I was like, oh, shit. This guy's like 25. Yeah. He's got a fucking egg yolk <laughs> in the back of his head. He's got a reverse yarmulke, and he's fucking killing it. Where's he from? Yeah. Argentina? Uh, I think he's Spanish. No, that's Tony Parker. Is, I believe. He's French. Oh, no, Tony Parker's French, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. I feel like he's from... Uh, I got a second question yes. here. Brian, this is the harder one. How many days between April 1st and September 29th has Barry Bonds not hit a home run on? Does that question make sense? You mean, what was the longest span within those days in his entire career he went without hitting a home run? Not longest span. So let's say the baseball season is from April 1st to September 29th. Yeah. So throughout Barry Bonds' career, how many dates in between there, overall in his entire career, did he never hit a home run on? How many different days? Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, wow. I bet I'm going to be blown away by this. Uh, 20. You want one more guess? 15. One. One. One? He's hit a home run on One. every day. Every every single day except for August 5th. Damn, what was going on on August 5th? I don't know. You know, it's weird. Bobby Bonds, his father, hit his most home runs on August 5th. Or was it his August 5th? Uh, yeah, so Barry bon- Bobby Bonds hit the most home runs on August 5th. Barry Bonds hit a home run on every single day between April 1st and September 29th in his career except for August 5th. Damn, I wonder... And his father hit the most amount of home runs in his career on August 5th. On August 5th. That's fucking wild, dude. Baseball is filled yeah. with these we- weird stats. Weird things. Barry, Barry and Bobby Bonds are the only players ever to have 300 home runs and uh, 400 stolen bases. Do you think that uh, Jeff Passan or no, or Tim, Tim Kirkigan would have known that answer? No. Do you think there's anybody the, alive who would have sh- known that answer? The Schwab. The Schwab, dude. You think the Schwab would have known? Yeah, dude. I was watching Stump the Schwab the other day, and I was actually killing it. Okay. You got any more questions? Uh, I don't. Ricky Henderson almost uh, with the 300 uh, home runs, 400 RBI, uh, stolen bases. Ricky Henderson was off by three home runs, so he had 297 home runs, 1,400 stolen bases. Craig Biggio was off by nine, 291 home runs, 414 stolen bases. And Bobby Abreu was off by 12, 288 and 400. Wow. I've been watching some Craig Biggio highlights, dude. I fucking love Craig Biggio. I like Craig Biggio a lot, too. I was watching um, the fucking... Uh 97 game seven uh, between the Indians and the uh, Guardians and the uh, Marlins, mm-hmm. um, which is going to lead into Omar Vizquel. But I, dude, that series was so sick. And I forgot Craig Council was on that team. Yeah, um, Craig Council hit the walk off, no? Yeah, uh, I think he tied it up. I think Craig Council tied it up. I don't think he hit. Might have been Miguel Cabrera that hit that walk off. I watched a pretty good video about how that Marlins team. No, maybe, Cabrera wasn't on the they, 97 team. He was on the 99 team, I believe. Two, oh, he was on the 2001 team. Well, they didn't win in 2001. They, w- they won the World Series twice in a few years. And there was like, there was a re- very interesting video about how they, after they won that first World Series, they went into like a complete rebuild mode. Yeah, they sold and they everything. Ended up some, somehow winning a few years later. Yeah, that was with Josh Beckett. 
and Cabrera. Yeah. Josh Beckett, Miguel Cabrera, maybe Gary Sheffield. I don't know. I think they got rid of Gary Sheffield by yeah. then. He pre- might have been on the Padres or the Dodgers. Cabrera's rookie year was 2003. Okay, so then it was 2003 when they won. I saw Cabrera as a minor leaguer. Really? Yeah, he with the Portland Sea Dogs. The Portland Sea Dogs are now with the Red Sox, but they were with the Marlins first. 